Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale SDKFZ222 armored car. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the model's turret, as well as all of the turret interior detailing. We'll be going over these mods and additions in this video. And here's the turret in some very early stages of its rebuild, as well as modding and upgrading. As you can see, since the last time this turret was showcased, the interior detailing has been starting to be added, as well as the turret ring has been refined. The turret ring, like what was mentioned in the previous video, is actually made out of a PVC segment, and the segment is the perfect size for the turret ring that is located on the top deck of the armored car. Moving our way to the inside, you will see some details, namely in the front portion here of the turret. The 222 black gun turret features several bulkheads here that are in the front portion of the turret, while in the back there is a, another bulkhead that we have here. In addition to the bulkheads, you can also see sculpted well beads have been added to further enhance the detailing of the part. Also on the front, in addition to the center bulkheads, there is another horizontal bulkhead that braces the frontmost portion of the turret. Before the turret progresses past this point, it gives me a good opportunity to describe really how the turret locks onto the gun and the armored car. Unlike other tanks like Tigers or Shermans or most other armored vehicles, the turret on those vehicles sits on top of the deck of the vehicle and there is a turret turner located either in the turret and there's a corresponding gear that is mounted along the rim of the turret hole. On the 222 the design is actually quite different. Rather than that setup the turret is actually connected directly to the gun carriage of the two centimeter flat gun. This is done via two points, one in the front and one in the back. The one in the back is connected to this bulkhead and there is a adjustment plate here in which the piece gets bolted to. On the real 22 you can actually it's this here is a threaded section you can actually thread and loosen this piece almost like a turnbuckle in order for you to get the proper tension. On the front portion of the turret, it's a little bit different. The front portion utilizes this yoke that we have here that is hard bolted directly to the turret ring. Now, if we notice, the yoke is actually centered and keeping it compressed in the center are actually two coil springs. This detailing is found on the actual 222 vehicle. The purpose of the coil springs is that it always keeps the turret lined center and true to the gun carriage and does afford a little bit of leeway in case any type of obstacles or any other obstructions are hit by the turret. In addition to the welds, the front portion has also been modified in these following plates here. The kit original, the turret was completely flush with all of its plates. Now this is accurate for a early version of the 222 armor car. However, this version here is more or less being modeled after a late variant of the vehicle. And on the later variations, the front portion of the turret was modified. The plates for the front portion of the turret actually were taller compared to the all flush versions that were found earlier. To extend the plate was very simple. I cut styrene segments and strips that were the same thickness of the original turret, mounted them to their appropriate locations, and then went ahead and blended everything in with the bodywork. Another mod that was made, is if you could see from the front here, was that on the original kit, the two side slits were the same thickness. On the real 222 armor car, the slit for the MG34 machine gun was a lot wider compared to the slit for the optic. Also, due to the carriage and 
way the gun is fitted inside, the center channel had to have also been enlarged compared to the kit original in order for it to better fit the gun carriage. In addition to building up the front plates, I also went ahead and started modifying the rear hatch area of the turret. If you notice that on this portion here there is a well that runs along the inside portion of the plate. This well is found on the real vehicle but is missing on the stock 222 kit that I was working with. If we recall th these kits are made out of water jet cut plastic and so it's just a simple rectangular hole. To add the detail well I fabricated it out of strips of styrene square. The square was thinner than the than the actual thickness of the kit turret and when it was mounted in I mounted it in so that it was flush with the rear portion which left for a nice little recess in the outer portion. The inner recess was blended in with the bodywork so everything should be seamless once painted. After this point here the tarp will start receiving a lot more of its interior detailing namely the seat for the, the backrest for the assistant gunner as well as the radio and other smaller fittings. Another bit of detailing that was needed to be fabricated was that of the radio mounting shelf. The 222 features a very elaborate shelf system for mounting on the radio. It's comprised out of two shelves. The top shelf is where the main radio goes and the bottom shelf I believe is either for another type of transmitter or some other type of communication device. The component that you see here is all scratch built and as you can see it's all scratch built out of brass. It is all soldered together assembly and is a one-off piece. As for the radio, I'll be utilizing the Panzerwerk.com German Resin Radio Kit. The kit comprised out of two components. You have the radio body, a detail faceplate. Also included, which is a nice touch, is a decal sheet with the various other little logos as well as markings which would be needed for the radio face. The radio was deburred on the mill and then was used for the mock-up of the shelf that you see here. As for the installation, as you can see there are two small holes in the top part of the bracket. This will be attached to the turret ring via fasteners, creating for a nice solid mounting point, which will be a permanent addition. As for the radio itself, there will be a leather belt which goes ahead and wraps around the radio box, keeping it firmly in place. This detail will be added after the frame will go into prime and paint. And here goes the radio mount, now permanently affixed to the turret. As you can see, it descends down into the fighting compartment, and the radio itself still fits in. Moving up from the radio, we have here a transformer box. A wire will come out of the radio into this box here. We'll then come out of this portion and run up to the antenna aerial base, which will be mounted on this mount. As for the antenna base, as you can see, it was all fabricated out of brass and a soldered washer. It is mounted on a spacer to the turret with countersunk slot screw fasteners, just like the real unit. Moving from the radio takes us to the rear column again. As you can see since the last scene, the fasteners have been added. And again, all the fasteners that you will see that mount equipment to the turret are going to be installed in a similar fashion with that of countersunk slot screws. Also near the antenna base mount is that of two small straps. As for what equipment gets mounted to the straps, that I am unsure of. However, the straps themselves are your typical German AFV tool post straps and are functional. They simply open up and lock down. They were simply mounted to the turret, like you see here. Now, unlike the other components, which are bolted from the outside with fasteners, these ones here will be welded to the turret plate, and small sculpted weld beads will be added shortly after the filming of this video. Moving along, the inside of the turret takes us to first this resin back seat here. This seat here is for the assistant gunner. 
when the gun mount is installed, you'll see that this chair here is directly below the seat for the assistant gunner. This component here is made out of resin as a new addition to the East Coast Armory.com product line. The real seat itself can actually open up. You would pull on this knob here, it is spring bound to allow the seat to pivot out of the way. As for the reason why the seat would need to be pivoted out of the way, I am unsure of. Either possibly to get to some of the equipment that's stowed in the this portion here of the armor car, which once everything is installed, it's a very tight fit. Or it could also be used as probably to stand on when the armor car is doing scouting or any, so possibly even anti-aircraft uh, functions. Moving on to the side port here. The 222 turret on the rear has a small hatch which can pivot out of the way and can be opened. The plastic that you see here came with the kit and was modified in order to have it fit in the small little recess that was discussed earlier. For the hinges, the hinges are fully functional and they are resin from Panzerwork.com. They are nicely done and they were also utilized on the side doors which was covered in a earlier video. In addition to the exterior function, the interior detailing has also been added. First, you can see that the hinges are mounted to the turret with the same method with the fasteners, just like I mentioned earlier. Also fabricated is a small little lock mechanism that you see here. The lock is fully functional when it's in the down state here. The hatch cannot open if pivoted out of the way. The hatch will be able to swing and open. In addition to this hinge, the actual locking mechanism was also fabricated. That is this component here. The system is designed on the real 222 that in order to open the hatch, you need to pivot this handle, which is connected to this lug, out of the way. This disengages the lug from a securing hole and allows you to open the hatch. There is another securing hole on the bottom in which the handle would then lock in place. On the real 222, this component here is spring bound and has a reset on it. However, due to the scale of the model, the spring feature was not added, but the piece still functions in the exact same way. Moving towards the sides of the turret, this is a symmetrical look on the other side. First here we have a visor port. Now, it's important to note that Bec on the real 222 that I am using for reference, the visors have been replaced. In their place, there was a small metal patch that was added. I have seen this modification added to several real 222s in within action photographs. On the original 222, there would have been a small little visor port to look outside, and on the interior would have been mounted with four fasteners along with probably some kind of ballistic glass component like what was seen on the hull interior. However, because I didn't really see what the actual component looked like, rather than taking a rough guess, I went ahead and emulated the real 222 I'm using as reference by that having the plate welded over. As you can see, even though the plate is welded over, the four fastener holes are present and what will be added shortly after the filming of this video will be some weld detailing. Also, as of note, for the material, I went ahead and used clear Lexan plastic that has been scuffed. However, once the piece is painted, you will no longer be able to see out of these visors. In addition to the visor, we have here a small little handlebar. These handles are present on both sides of the turret. They are fabricated out of brass and two soldered washers, and are then affixed to the armor car with that of the fasteners. Moving our way to the front portion again, takes us to the little optic protector mechanism that we have here. As we recall, on the 222, there is an optic in this location here. The optic is obviously a very fragile piece and can easily be damaged with shrapnel or a stray bullet. In order to protect the component, a small little guard was designed in its place. The way the guard works is that when the component needs to be protected, a small little metal plate is covering and protecting the lens. When needed, the with a turn of a lever, the component can open, now allowing the clearance for the optic to see through. The way it works on the inside, it's a very, very simple system. You have the plate, which is connected to a rod, and then to a small handle. By simply pivoting the handle out of the way, you can open and close the slot.
And here's the gun mounted to the turret. Like I mentioned earlier, the turret on the 222 series is different than on most tanks in which the gun and the turret are connected as one piece as opposed to the turret being mounted to the tank and the gun being mounted inside of the turret. Here you can see all of the equipment now that it's added to the inside portion. As you can see, it's a very cramped and tight fit, which is prototypical to the real unit. And here goes the gun and turret assembly now fitted to the model. As you can see, the interior is just about complete. All that remains left on the turret now is the fabrication of the hinged grenade grills, which go over this portion here of the turret. That, as well as some external welds, will then the, complete the last of the detailing on the turret. It will be then at that point, the, inter the turret's interior will be primed, painted, and weathered. With that, that will totally complete the turret, and I will then be able to focus on the rest of the armor car's external detailing. And with that, that concludes this model update video for this 1-6 scale German SDKFZ-222 armor car. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 and 1-16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.